Welcome to the Get Comfortable with Maya tutorial series. What we're going to start doing here is just getting comfortable with the Maya application. Now what you're going to need is Maya 2015. You can go to the Autodesk education community if you're a student or you've worked in the 3D industry and get it for, uh, for free. Basically you get it for free. It's a three year extendable student license. You cannot with the student license like release an indie game or a commercial game of any kind in order to le release any games publicly you'd actually have to buy the software if you decide you're going to release a game publicly. Anyway, so I'm going to go ahead and lower this now once you have it downloaded and installed you just go ahead and open it up and you're going to get this output window you can just minimize this anytime you see this output window just go ahead and minimize it because it's not something that you ever need to have open first thing you're going to get is this little pop-up window so it's just telling you that you know anything that's a new feature to maya 2015 is going to be highlighted in yellow you can uncheck that if you don't want it i recommend you leave it i get used to them being there and i usually leave them on i never turn them off even after i've used the any package that has this kind of feature i just leave it on all the time and you can have this show this at start of this box so you can uncheck that if you never want to see it again i leave it i don't mess with it anyways this also i also leave this let this pop up this is allowing you to go to quick tutorials if you were to click on one it would you can make you know open up a video i shouldn't click that because whatever yeah if you click one of these it'll uh, play something you know that you can learn how to use maya better or you can just watch these tutorial series and do these as well Anyways, just go ahead and close that window as well. First thing we're going to do is we're going to take a look at this UI because this probably looks very strange. And uh, the best thing to get started in any 3D package is to get familiar with what it is you're looking at before you start trying to mess with it. So, of course, we have our main menu. Now, interesting thing about this main menu up at the top is it changes as you're using the application. Don't get worried about it. It's pretty easy to understand if I click on polygons this button here just below it uh, what you see up, up here some of these will always stay the same and some of these options on the end here will change and that's based on your sub menus here so if I were to click this menu set menu I guess is what they called it and I drop it down I click like animation notice how some of these options here changed these are options that are specific to animation only. They're useless in any other aspect other than animation, so they are only available for animation, which is kind of cool. Uh, go ahead and leave that on polygons. I'll just you know pop through a couple of these, and you can see how that's changing, but then change it back to polygons because that's what we're going to be working with. You have uh, your basic buttons here. You know you got a new scene, open, save, I and mean, they're pretty self-explanatory by looking at them. Before I go further, if you notice, as I'm hovering over stuff, it's telling you exactly what the button does. Maya is pretty cool like that. It uh, They want you to be able to learn how to do it just by hovering over something. You can see that this is a new scene, and it also, on the right-hand side, it says that Control plus N is the hotkey for the new scene. So two things that are cool about this, you can find out what it does, and you can also see, does this have a hotkey? So if you, great, great, you know, pro tip here, because you don't always want to have to move out of the render window while you're working, is to hover over the button, and if you don't remember what the hotkey is, look at what the hotkey is and instead of clicking the button go back in the render window and use the hotkey uh, moving forward you can see these little arrows here and how this one's kind of like a show if you hover over it, it says show hide and that's exactly what it does it'll show what's hidden and it'll hide what's hidden i'm not even gonna go too far into every single button because that'll take forever and it's best if we cover a button as we're learning so then i just give a basic overview of what everything is so these are kind of selection options these allow you to turn off the ability to select something in here by you know trying to select it so if i were to unclick this i wouldn't be able to select what that is that i least it says handle objects so unchecking it makes it to where i cannot no matter what i do with that unchecked i can't select any handles uh in the render window that's all these do they're just different options for shutting off and turning on the ability to select things in the render window uh, you have your grid settings uh right here where you can snap to grid you can snap to points and so on you just hover over them and see what they do these are your snaps here which you know they're really really helpful uh most of the time whenever you're setting up references you'll use these or you want to get something directly on a grid point uh those will come in handy and we'll cover that in more depth of when to use those 
uh, these are your rendering settings. So if you want to like, you want to render a scene, uh, you've created something really cool and you want to take a picture of it, uh, maybe even for a portfolio or, you know, maybe post on the website after you follow through a tutorial series, like show everybody what you made. That'd be kind of cool, you know, if you post on the forums. Uh, and then over here you have your absolutes, your X, Y, Z to be able to type in the, you know, an, a specific X, Y, or Z value. You got that up there. Uh, which those of you familiar with any other 3D packages, I don't really have to even explain to you X, Y, and Z, but that'll be covered in more depth as we go forward. Moving on, this is something that's kind of unique to Maya, is these this tab system here. Now, these are just quick select buttons. Everything that is in any one of these tabs is also in this main menu section. So like if I go to the polygons and I want to create a cube, I could come over here and just real quickly select the quick select button and then create my cube or I can come up here to create polygon primitives click cube and that does exactly the same thing that that button does so instead of going through the menu options to go to this cube I could just click this button and you can also just real quick I'll tell you this like if I wanted if there's an option up here and I want that to be in my quick select if you hover over it and you hold down control and shift on your keyboard and then you left mouse button click on the word and then drag your mouse over where you want it and then release see it just dropped it there and that's all it is you just hover over what you want to put on your quick select control shift click on the option and then drag it onto your quick select and that moves it there and then you can delete them just by right clicking and deleting go ahead and try that yourself just control shift drag something over release it and then delete the button because we don't want to put them up there right now especially since you don't know what they do what's the point of that <laughs> anyways um We'll get into more of this, just quick select options, that's all it is. Now on the left hand side, you've got your select, your lasso, your paint selection, your move, rotate, and scale. Now, I'm just going to say this because it would be really annoying. Again, I was talking about those hotkeys and instead of having to go select the hotkey and then come back down here to the window window, you want to get really familiar with especially your move, your rotate, and your scale hotkeys, which is just W, E, and R. And again, anytime you want to see a uh, what a hotkey is for a tool just mouse over it and on the right hand side you'll see the hotkey in parentheses so that'd be w e and r and that's actually if you use 3ds max it's the same thing as w e and r for move rotate and scale but uh r is not rotate don't confuse yourself i don't know why why they do that ZBrush understands that, but uh, Autodesk apparently does not. That R should just be rotate. It makes more sense. Anyways, moving forward, just below these tools, you have this is the last tool that you use. So if I were to use a tool, it would pop up an icon here. It's the last tool that I use, which is technically your selected tool. It's the tool you still have active. Uh, but that's the last tool used button right there. There's nothing there right now because we haven't used a tool. But if we used a tool, you know, move something, that tool would appear here, not the moves, but uh, other tools would appear there. Below that, you have your perspective options, like this rendering window here. There's just an options, and you can create your own. And they're just panel layouts is all they are. You'd have, like, the four view, the single view, split view, and this is the outliner, which we'll talk about later. Uh, this is a custom view that I made myself, uh, and I will show you guys how to do this. Uh, guys and gals and I will show you how to do this in a future tutorial how to set up your own custom layout it's, it's just very convenient to be able to set up a layout that's going to be useful to you as an individual and help you customize Maya more to fit your personal needs uh, if you know how to do that so we will cover that in a future tutorial but anyways we're going to come back up here and go ahead and click our main panel and we'll go ahead and I'm going to cover this real fast although we're not going to cover this render window we'll do that in probably the next tutorial but in this tutorial I will cover one little thing is that you know how we can get this four panel view or we could go over here by clicking this there is a hotkey for that and it's just you hover over this window and press your space bar and it brings up the four view then if you hover over you don't have to click on it you just hover over the window like I'm hovering over the top you can see that right there if I hover over that press the space bar it maximizes that and then i can press the space bar to go back to the four hover over the perspective and just press my space bar and that's all you gotta do just space bar in between them it's really convenient actually coming over here <laughs> moving forward to the far right hand side 
is uh, your modeling toolkit. You got your attribute, your tool settings, and your channel box editor. These are going to be very, very important. They're in the far right hand corner. It's like you don't think they'd be important because they're so off to the side there, but they're actually extremely important. We're going to make these more convenient to access right now. So, first thing I want you to do is I want you to go ahead and turn one on. Now, if it doesn't, see how mine appeared on the right hand side? If yours did not appear over there and it appeared like this, which is probably what yours did. I want you to go over here and just drag it over here to the side and release it. Now that's pretty cool, right? It just kind of snapped itself over there. Go ahead and select the attribute editor where you can hit control plus A. We'll also open up the attribute editor. You notice how this highlighted it just turned on my attribute editor window. And we're going to go ahead and do the same thing. We're going to drag this over here and we're just going to go ahead and release it. And now we have them in tabs. And that's how I like them. I like everything on the right hand side instead of this window floating around. So yours will probably be like this, which is the tool settings. I turn tools on, just select it up here at the top with your left mouse button, drag it over and just release it and it'll dock it over here and go ahead and do that with all four of these buttons. That way they're not floating around like this and just release it. So every time you need one of these tools, they'll always be over here on your right hand side. Now to, you know, notice how I shrank that down. All I did was it's already open. So if I click on it again, it shrinks that down. So now they're on my right hand side and it's just more convenient. Go ahead because we did that and I, I'm not sure, but a lot of times anytime you make a change like that, and if it's not staying, like if you were to close Maya and open it back up and those suckers are not docked over here, still go up here and click file and just click save preferences. All right. And then it'll save that you prefer to have these over here. I guess that's how that works. So if you make a change to your Maya interface and it's not staying every time you open it, make sure you're not forgetting to go to file and save preferences. Uh, on the bottom of your screen, time slider. This is basically for animation. It's always a really fun thing to deal with animation. Now this is something that's really cool. Just below the animation is this little slider here. Now if you notice over here, we got a one and uh, another one. Then over here, we got a 24 and a 48. Now this is basically saying that the first box is saying that there's at the beginning, the very first frame of this animation set is one. And then it's just saying that we're this slider here, if you notice there's a one here, is starting on one. Okay, if I move it over, notice it's no longer starting on seven. It's uh, or no longer on one, it's on seven. That's all that does controlling this slider bar here. And of course, the one on the right hand side is 24. You'll notice there's 24 frames showing 24, 24, but there's 48 frames total. See 48. Now it's a 48. This is a 25. That's 25. Oh, that's a confuse. I hope I'm not confusing anyone with that. But uh, to put it into more perspective, this little bar here is showing what frames of the 48 frames total that we have are showing in our animation timeline. And this is modular. You can, there's a little button. It's kind of hard to see, but next to the one and next to the 24 is a little button. If you click that and you drag over, it's kind of like zooming in and zooming out on your animation timeline. Maya's animation tools are so awesome, man. Why do we get into them? They just are so very convenient and easy to use. It's, I, I prefer it way more than, um, uh, 3ds max and down here we have the mail script where you can type in mail script now a thing to understand about Maya is everything everything you do in Maya is an embedded language it's Maya's embedded language everything I mean if I create a sphere it's a script that created that sphere and that's a really cool thing and we'll get into that in the future about why that's so cool about how you can create your own scripts to automate processes for you and the cool thing is you can do the process if you don't know what the script is you can do the process once yourself open up the scripts find out what the script is this is the script editor you can find out exactly what you just did and then you can uh, create a script and we'll, we'll get into creating scripts later all right i'll show you all about the script editor which is this little button over here how to create scripts save them tack them on your bar here so like this here is a script that's box to create a box is just a script and you can create scripts like that yourself and we'll cover that in a future tutorial it's actually a really cool concept that's everything that we're going to cover for right now in the next tutorial we're going to start talking about the render window